because this was what my son said when he called last week. When he puts me on speaker and put his mother-in-law on speaker, he said, Iya, do you remember? I said, what is that? Tell me. He said, you said, Papa said earlier in the address. I said, yes. And you said, that, like this, gong gong. You said, don't worry. That temporary job will be permanent for you and your wife. <laughs> And lo and behold, that man called me, last week putting everybody on speaker, and he said, yeah, you remember you said, I said, Papa said, you know, <laughs> and uh, God, Lord has done it. They have given not only me, but my wife, permanent job. You know what that is? Welcome. Watch miracles that are still happening today. To God alone be all the glory forever. Amen. What God cannot do does not exist. I am Mrs. Vivian Jato, formerly known as Miss Vivian Osadebe. I am giving my testimonies from Dallas, Texas. I joined NSPPD August 2023. You know, a lady in her late 30s, being the first child of the family of six, and some of the kids' sisters are married, they've started having kids. I don't even have a relationship, I don't have anybody. You know, I was just worried and believing that one day I will be celebrated. So while being on the altar, Papa mentioned during the throne room verdict, September 7th, Papa said, any celebration and congratulations that is for the future. Drag it now in the name of Jesus. Please, I don't know why we need to say this particular prayer. For somebody say, my father, my father, my father, my father. Any celebration, any congratulation planted in the future. Say right now, I drag it to the present. Say I drag it to the present. Say today, any celebration, any congratulation I have been waiting for. Say right now, I drag you to the present. I drag it, I drag it, a piano, a piano, a piano, a piano. And I said, yes, I drag my husband now. He also said, write a date you want to be celebrated. As it is laid in my spirit, that's what I just want to declare right now. I say right now. Right now. Say I decree and declare, I decree and declare that these dates, that these dates are my dates of celebration. Are my dates of celebration. Mention, the Mention the dates. Mention the dates. Mention the dates. Mention the dates. Keep on that super. I wrote to March March 2024. You know, I didn't have anybody, but I was just believing 2024 is gonna be my year of um, celebration. Also, there was one day again, Pastor said, dress the way you want to be addressed. And I was like, okay, this is a prophetic word. I went to the mall, I got this beautiful dress. Every morning when the prayer is going on, because it was 1 a.m. our time, I'll put on this beautiful dress on my pajamas, knowing that someday I'm going to wear my wedding dress. Then March 2024, let me be specific, on the 14th, I met my handsome Odogu, mighty man of God, not just any man, a man that belongs to the altar of fire and also a streams of joy member. We got talking. Remember I put 20th of March, but God did it his own way. He orchestrated my meeting with my husband on the 14th of March. Then we got talking, and before you know, Papa Pai was like, let's do this. Within two weeks, I was like, ah, is this how things happen? Or oh, there have been any testimonies? So people say one week, two weeks, they got married. I say, no, bros, please, let's, you know, let's date small. Let's date small to get to know ourselves. He said, ah, I, I don't want to waste time, but I know you're my wife. I don't know what you're waiting for. And, you know, just to fast forward the whole thing. We came to Streams of Joy and we met this beautiful pastor and his wife, Pastor K. And they were able to take us through the counseling class. We did everything. You know, the counseling class was smooth. And June 29, my diary was paid back home. And um, September 7th, we took the vow before the Almighty God. Today, I am Mrs. Jato, no more Miss Vivian. What God cannot do does not exist. Papa, the oil on your head will never run dry. I thank you, Papa, for always standing for people. My name is Leslie, and uh, I'm coming from the United Kingdom. I made a vow to God that I just want to come and redeem. I started life in the United Kingdom in 1995 as a young man, very young man. And uh, unfortunately, I made certain choices which were very wrong. 
Uh, I joined the bar crowd, uh, got myself into trouble. And in 2001, in one of these troubles, we got arrested. And because my stay wasn't properly done in the United Kingdom, I was deported back to Ghana. That was in January 2001. But as God will have it, in March 2001, I came back to the United Kingdom. Although it was illegally, I entered through back into the United Kingdom. In 2016, by God's grace, I got my permanent residency. The only problem was that I did not qualify for citizenship because of something called the good character requirement and because of my previous deeds that keeps following you like a, a mark, everything came cropping up. So I didn't have the hope. I knew people that had, hadn't done much things and uh, unfortunately got declined. Uh, there's no refund of your money, nothing. So I just kept praying about it. Luckily, I, found, I came to the altar and started putting it before God. I heard about the testimonies that really sounded like lies. I was like, is God really able to do these things? So I started praying about this. I uh, put the application through. As Papa kept declaring, they will say yes. They will say yes. I know the person take your word. They will all say yes. It says protocols will be broken for your sake. Protocols will be broken for your sake. You will be one of a kind. Protocols are broken for your sake. So I kept and I sowed a seed on that altar. And I just put the application through Saddam and kept waiting. At one point, they wrote back to me and said, can you send us your passport? I did. I was very anxious, but I did. And lo and behold, finally, my citizenship came through. I just want to stand here and thank God for this. My second testimony. On the 2nd of September, I woke up getting ready for work. I just started having dizzy spells. You know, uh, I went to work and came back home and my wife rushed me to the hospital. Upon getting to the hospital, I was told I had suffered from a cerebrovascular accident. Those of you in the medical field, you know what I'm talking about. I feel much better. I shouldn't be here today, having seen what I saw in the hospital. People so young suffering the same thing. But I just want to stand here to declare the word of God. On the altar, I heard Papa praying. Papa praying about these things and I, I claimed them. I claimed them fully. My faith was built up strongly. Uh, today I want to stand and say I am healed. I just want to say thank you to Lord and I just want to thank you Papa for all you're doing for us. Thank you very much once again. My name is Ruth. I'm giving this testimony from Kampala in Uganda. I'm from Zimbabwe and I work in Sudan. But um, I'm giving this testimony on this uh, Wednesday, the 20th of, um, of November. And it's on behalf of my daughter's friend. In August, I was in Melbourne with my daughter and her family. She has three boys and two of them were born, all born in August the other one on the 17th and the other one on the 23rd. And my birthday is on the 27th of August. So we decided to to have the birthday for Jeremiah who was born on the 23rd to celebrate his birthday and my birthday. The other boy we celebrated it right on the 17th. And then my daughter's friend, Michelle, that I had seen in 2017 when Jeremiah was born, she came with her, her two children and it was like a pyjama party so everyone, all the ladies were, were wearing the same color of pyjamas including her. And then I left uh, Melbourne right at the end of August and I, was, um, I came back to my duty station on the 1st of September. That September, just like like uh, th that first week, my daughter sent me a message and she said, Mom, uh, Michelle traveled to the U.S. and when she arrived at the airport, she, she, she went into a coma. She just collapsed and she went into a coma. So I said, what? And then she said, yeah, this is what happened. So she was in the U.S. She was admitted and she was on a life-supporting machine. Her mother traveled from Zimbabwe to go and see her. The husband who was in, in Melbourne, 
also traveled to go and see her, but she was in a coma, they couldn't do anything. So the whole of September, Michelle was in coma. October, she was in coma. She became my prayer point number one. She became my priority prayer point. And then it so happened that when the husband decided to go to to the US in, in October, the, the doctors actually told him that, uh, you know, there's no more life. Actually, her, her brain was damaged and uh, she, she will not come back to life. And they were now encouraging him to sign papers that Michelle should be removed from the, the machines. Because they had been told that the bill now for the hospital was now 690,000 US dollars. And the husband at some point wanted to give in, but the mother refused. So we kept on praying and uh, then a word of knowledge came just on Sunday, this past Sunday on the 17th of November. You actually said, you will not die, you are coming out of that coma, come out of that coma. God said to me right now, a loved one is coming out of coma. And then you said, uh, uh, for you to know that you are the one I'm talking about, you have been in coma since September. For you to know you are the one that I'm talking about, it's been in coma since September. But hear me as I hear the Lord, it will not even be up to 48 hours. I decree, let it be reversed right now. I say, let it be reversed right now. And I, I quickly connected uh, Michelle on that. And I said, this is Michelle's word. And I said, thank you, God. I just, uh, I was just uh, uh, clapping and saying, oh, God, thank you. You have, you have done it. And then I, after the, the church service, my, my son-in-law told me that, yeah, actually, mom, she's out of coma. And then I was like, wow, God has done it. So I, I, I'm just here, Pastor Jerry, to give all the glory to God. I, I'm so, so touched by the way God reversed the case of Michelle. I'm here to give all the glory to God and to say to you, Pastor Jerry, thank you so much for teaching us how to pray, for believing in God, no matter how difficult, he, how difficult our situations are, are looking like, no matter how difficult the circumstances are, you have taught us to keep, to keep going with our prayers. Like you said, I am still standing, despite the fact that I don't see the answers, I don't see the clouds, I don't see the, the wind, but my valley will always be full because of praying. Thank you so much for the work that you are doing and may God bless you, Papa. And uh, we are praying for you. Nothing will ever happen to you if you are praying for all these people to be, to be delivered, to be healed. To, be, to come out of uh, bad situations, why should you be affected by the devil? We know there are so many enemies around you, and so we continue to pray that God will continue to protect you and your family and the families of all pastors in, in, in the streams of joy. Thank you, God. What God cannot do does not exist. The Lord is good. I joined, uh, finally joined NSPPD November 23rd after several people have been sending messages to me and I will ignore. In fact, when I block you, I will not just block you. You are not there. My phone is with me. I will be talking. Who nonsense, idiot. I will be still be talking and telling them, what should you send to me? You know, but one day, an heavenly mother I know is so prayerful sent it to me and I joined and since that day, my life has never remained the same. One week on the altar, my son, his wife had already gone. She went through a scholarship and he was to be a dependent. And you know, it was that time that they said dependents were not going to be allowed or something. They just were not going to give them or allow them enjoy that normal benefits. And my son applied. And on the altar on that day, Papa said, one day, visa. Are you ready for a 24 hour miracle? That is one of the things the Lord said I will do today. Wherever your immigration document is, at the sound of your amen, receive a favorable outcome. 
Receive it right now. Receive it right now. I say you think this and how's that? Papa, I did not mock you, but I monitored you, eh? Hi, cha 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 cha. God have mercy. I monitored Papa. That's first week. Papa will be praying. I'll be looking at his mouth. Is he saying Jesus or Jesus? You know, I will look. They are telling him something. I will look. I was see. See, you pay stop looking, pray. I say, no, I want to be sure. I will look at Papa. He will be sweating. I say, but somebody sweating and praying. I say, okay, I will look for that. And I will look to see if they are telling Papa something. And I said, how can they be telling this man? The man never stopped praying. He's praying. He's talking. Even if they are telling him, he will not be able to hear where now. To call the names of the sicknesses now. No intelligent man would do that. You guys can see the spirit. So, where will he hear? Where will this man hear? So, you can know that God actually speaks to him. And you will not make a mistake in calling the names of these sicknesses. And that day, he said, one day, visa. And I was already like believing because when I saw Papa crying one day for mercy, he was crying. I said, but wait, how can a child be crying and his father will not hear? So definitely he must hear. This man is a child of God. And when he said, one day visa, I said, okay, let's, I wasn't testing you, Papa, oh, but I wanted to like God. Oh yeah, do my own too. One day visa. How possible? We submitted yesterday. When he said, that yesterday was when Papa said, one day visa. That very day, Ashe, they have sent him away. They have sent him away, Melo. He was afraid. He didn't want me to panic. Because how can you submit a day? And the next day, they are sending you a to come and pick your passport. My son went. He didn't let anybody know. He went to the embassy. It was when he came out and he asked, yeah, where are you? I said, I'm um, at home. And he came and he opened his passport and visa. <laughs> one day. My children begin to fear me. Oh. When I talk, they say, Yeah, don't talk. I don't talk. <laughs> again, Papa said earlier than expected. Don't know why I'm hearing it again. Your laughter shall be called earlier than expected. Your laughter shall be called earlier than expected. I have been praying. I've been telling God because He'll tell me He's doing this job, He's doing that job. You know, these boys, I know that they are Jebota. You know, they are strong, but the one I, I felt that it was too much now. Two, three, four jobs. I don't, but I said, God, please, I don't know how this is going to happen. And Baba said, earlier than expected. And that evening, in the night, rather, early in the morning, like around after 1 a.m., I was online. I saw my son online. And I was like, see, what's happening? You're not sleeping? He said, yeah, no, I'm not sleeping. I'm praying. Something's that. I said, what's that? I said, don't worry. Whatever it is. Papa has said earlier than expected. And you know what? This was what my son said when he called last week. When he put me on speaker and put his mother-in-law on speaker, he said, Iya, do you remember? I said, what is that? Tell me. He said, you said, Papa said earlier than expected. I said, yes. And you said, that, like this, Gongo, you said, don't worry. That temporary job will be permanent for you and your wife. <laughs> And lo and behold, that man called me last week, putting everybody on speaker, and he said, Yeah, you remember you said, I said, Papa said, you know. <laughs> and uh, God, Lord, has done it. They have given not only me, but my wife, permanent job. You know what that means? Less than one year in the UK, they have moved out of somebody's house. They have their own apartment. Then, this last one, I was broke as an event person. And I asked God, God, I need money. Ah, I'm broke, red. And uh, Papa said, you may not see the rain. You may not see the sun. But your value will be full of water. You may not see the window. You may not see the rain. Oh, but your valley shall be full of water. And that day, that day, I kid, I held on it. And events that they had come to me to make hurry. They said they were going to come back. I didn't see them. Lo and behold, they called me. Huh? Tell off, madam. Oh yeah, give us your account number. I said, okay. <laughs> you never know anything. You are under the auction. <laughs> I sent it. So you know these people paid for the events since almost one month now. In, how do they say, six digits? 
They have not given me dates, Papa. They have not given me what. You have done invoice. We have total. But dates of events, time of events, I don't know. But what I have done, Papa, I have bought their things. Don't worry. I will not use their money. But I have taken my gain because I was broke and I needed that money. So God stepped in. And today, I have, I'm standing here just like you have instructed me, God, to stand before your people to testify to this. Papa! People will say, may the oil on your head not run dry. I agree. But whenever you want to close everyday prayer, you say, we love you. God bless you. And I said, I love you too. God bless you. Papa, nothing will happen to you. Ah, nothing. I don't think I'll happen to you. Don't think I'll happen to you. Nothing will happen to you. You will live long to declare the glory of the Lord. You will continue to prophesy. Lives will be changed. The grace of the Lord upon your life will never depart. I am a living witness that you are a man of God. Let your word know that I, Jukba Bosse, they stand before the world to say that Pastor Jerry S.A. is the son of God. Glory to God. Please like, comment, subscribe, turn on the notification, and share with your friends and family to encourage someone. Remember, there is no impossibility with God. Jesus is Lord. Join NSPPD 7 a.m. Fire Prayers 